thing started about three years ago when we started the uh, DSA Oldies radio show. And it just became, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. Now we're on 29 radio stations across the country. And it all comes right here out of San Antonio. And I continue to hear people say, man, I wish I lived in San Antonio. I wish I lived in San Antonio. And uh, so they come here for, for vacation. They try to arrange their vacations to come to San Antonio. And uh, we are a great example to other uh, baby boomers across the country. And I think that's a, a great thing for everybody. You guys are, are just doing a phenomenal job. Thank you so much. And most people say, You've uh, woken a sleeping giant, Henry. I said, well, we were taking a nap. That's all we were taking a nap. And uh, now we're going to get started. Anybody make any mistakes? And naturally, everybody was so innocent, no, we didn't make any mistakes. <laughs> and then on the playback, we're hearing it to see if there's any mistake, and we'd find mistakes. And we'd say, I thought you said you didn't make a mistake. It, it would come out in the recording. Then we went to stereo, uh, and then now we have two tracks. And then it went on to, to multi-tracks. I said, we didn't have all of that luxury. But the sad thing, when they perform live, you're going to hear them. The studio make you sound, and, and, and even in photography, it make you look like, like you're just not the same person. It's a lie. <laughs> so the, the studio, the way it was for us, it was, uh, we had to do it right. Uh, and we had to, this is why I, when I had, when I was in charge of Sonny's band, I would rehearse the band from 12 noon to 12 midnight, and that's not, not exaggerating. One song. And we wouldn't play that song until everybody knew the song. So we sacrificed, and at the same time, we were sacrificing our, our family, our children. But see, that's the price that we were paying just to do things right. So when we started, it, it was more of a sacrifice than anything else. And, and really, for me now that I'm serving the Lord, it's also a sacrifice many a times, but I'm already used to it. I've been trained into paying the price. If we did it for something that was temporal, now we do it for something that's eternal, that's really worthwhile. Amen. You know. So, Sonny, how did you feel when the band uh, rehearsed for 12 hours and you just walk like in and just do the song? <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing? <laughs> what were you doing? What were you doing? Uh, uh, that's a good question. Isn't it? What were you doing? Yeah, right, right on that time. Well, um, Rudy uh, had a real, real good ear, still does, but has a real good ear for hearing the parts. So uh, I could always rely on him because we, we, we picked the song. Okay, this is the one we're going to go with uh, for now. Okay, let's get a key for it. And, all. and, and back in the day, Manuel would do that because we were going to school. So Manuel would do that on his own sometimes. And I was going to do like a song from James Brown. Wait a minute, dude. Wait a minute. I can get up there. No, but he'd get a key. And then by the time we got together, you're going to sing it in that particular key. Well, we were young. We could do that. We could do that, you know. That's not like James Brown. But with Rudy, what, what, the gift that, that with, I had from the very beginning was that he could hear parts. So he'll say, okay, well, let me figure this out. Look, okay, you're playing this part and you're playing this part. And let's see that. Okay, now you play this part, and he would give everybody parts. So then we'd just go over and over and over until it sounded good. 
Anything you don't sound good, well, let's change it. Wait a minute, that, that, that voice didn't really sound that good. Um, okay, uh, why don't you try, try, try be, be black. And so we'd be there at the time consuming. I just go on and on until the sound was right. And we learned that for many years. When I started in music, um, one of the things that, that, that was very, very helpful for Sonny was that he loves simplicity and people love, love simplicity. But my goal was to advance music. As a matter of fact, I, I would offer a musician uh, a job with us and they, they would ask me what kind of music are you going to play if I say it, if I would say Mexican music or Latin music they were turned off because they wanted to get into a music where they could not only perform it but advance in their knowledge or in, in music so my goal was when, and Sonny gave me the name the Latin breed he gave it to me it was his idea the name so when I started the Latin breed, I had no limits. I could do anything and everything that, I, that, that would come to my mind or my heart to do. So as we set out to doing this, uh, my goal was to educate people in music, but not by theory, but by example. And the amazing thing, even now in the Lord, is not me wanting to teach, teach people by by theory, but by teaching them by example. I wanted people to look up to us and then have the hunger, the desire to follow us and do better than us. And I got to see that. We got to, now, when I got into the music, Hispanic music, I was telling Henry, I would hear, let's say, <coughs> groups like Chicago, Blood, Sweat and Tears, they were at a certain level. Uh, some of the black groups, uh, Sonny mentions, uh, Jane Brown, there was, they're more or less on the same level. When you would hear Hispanic music, it was like 50 years behind. And my goal was to educate people in music. That was my, that, that was the desire of my heart. I just want to share something. You're seeing the face of the body of the music that you enjoyed and loved. But this is very important. The Apostle Paul in the scripture says that in the body of Christ it is composed of different parts. And he says, and the most important parts are the parts that are never seen. In our lives, they mention our names because we're the face. But if it had not been for the rest of the body members who would probably names you will never know. That's what put the whole thing together. And we need to also honor them for in the place where they were in the background behind the curtains and all that, that was okay with them. But I think that's important because in our lives today, we're supposed to be a body well, a few things, a few things. We were playing, we were playing in uh, Houston again, and uh, this gentleman walked in, and we had, uh, we were not aware of him. Uh, Rudy and I met him for the first time. His name was Huey Mo, and and he was a record producer. Uh, by that time, Manuel Guerra had already taken our very first hit song, which was "Talk to Me," uh, uh, into a very very good level as far as. Texas and some of the places that we were playing. So Huey Mo was very instrumental when he walked in that day into the club in Houston and approached us so that we would uh, agree to, to, to put the record on a national le uh, label so it would go across the whole country. For us that was kind of like, like a really important time in our lives to, to meet uh, Huey Mo. Huey Mo had things by that time, I don't know if you guys remember a song called Rock the Boat by Hughes Corporation. He had he took that to the number one. So for him to come into a club where we were playing, you know, we were still feeling like we were still getting started and stuff, right? But he came in there and he talked to Manny, they got together and said, hey, let's go, man. And we went to the national scale. And for us, that was a big door that opened. And then, of course, we were just happened to be there when La Musica de Hana came along and, and we were like one of the first guys right there already pursuing Lo Tejano uh, because of men. Excellent. Y'all enjoy that conversation today? Uh, let's 
Jesus that started with entertainment and your Christianity, brothers. Uh, you know, Sonny was the first one that came to our breakfast back in July of uh, last year. He's the first one at our breakfast. He didn't flinch when I asked, can you come? Can you do it? Absolutely. And then, of course, we've had so many that come by, and uh, you know who they are. Marie T. and Henry Lee and Camila Guerrero, the Dreamliners, everybody's been here. So uh, Sonny said, hey, when can I come back? Man, whatever you want to. So uh, I booked him for December. <laughs> I know you remember this one. 